All right, so my students have an upcoming quiz, and in this video, I wanna go over kind of all the material that's gonna be on that quiz. If you're one of my students, or if you're just someone else out there on the internet, thank you for watching. Uh, but here in this video, this is gonna be all about 45, 45, 90 right triangles, 30, 60, 90 right triangles, as well as the rest of this list, right? Trig ratios, finding missing sides and angles, and some other things that you will see later in the video. So down below, there's uh, timestamps. You can jump to whichever one of these you need, or if you just need to watch it straight through, and you take some notes, feel free to pause. But let's get into it. All right, starting off talking about 45, 45, 90 right triangles. Um, I like to think of it as like a template. And if this is my 45, 45, 90 right triangle, then both of the legs are gonna be congruent, all right? And for the purpose of this template, let's call it X. So we can fill in that X with any number. Or if you'd rather put like a number sign there instead of X, that works just fine too. Okay, if that's true, then the hypotenuse is gonna be X squared to two, or the number sign, whatever number you're using, times the square root of two called x square roots of two. So if we think about that here in these examples over here, number one, here one of my legs is seven. And so since both legs have to be the same, this other leg is also seven. And the hypotenuse is gonna be that number seven times the square root of two. And number two, this time they give us the hypotenuse, five squares of two. The number in front of the square root of two is a five. So both of my legs have to be five as well. All right, moving down here. And number three, this one's a little bit trickier. Here they give us a six for the hypotenuse. Normally, this is supposed to be something times the square root of two. Well, if it's supposed to be that and we don't have it, to get back to just that number, we have to divide by the square root of two. So when I come around this way, if I want to find one of these legs, I have to take this six and divide it by the square root of two. Now this poses a problem because we cannot have a square root in our denominator on the bottom of a fraction. So to fix it, we have to multiply by that um, square root over itself. This is really just taking it times one, but we're gonna make it look a little bit different, okay? When I multiply across the top, this is gonna give me six square roots of two, six square roots of two, and on the bottom, square root of two times square root of two is the square root of four, which simplifies back to being just two. Okay, so let me take this. Now I have six square roots of two over two, and now the six and the two, both on the outside of my square root, can simplify to be three. So this side over here, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna erase this here. I'm gonna say this is gonna be three square roots of two. Now, if that's what one leg is, the other leg has to be the exact same. So also three square roots of two. All right, last one uh, for the 45, 45, 90s is this. Here it gives us one leg is three square roots of five. Now, right away, we know that we can make the other leg the exact same because legs are the same no matter what the 45, 45, 90 looks like. So here this is gonna be three square roots of five as well. And then I also have to take that number, in this case, three square roots of five times the square root of two for my hypotenuse. Now we know how to multiply square roots. So I'm gonna take three square roots of five times the square root of two. Since the square root of five and square root of two, um, those, that five and two are both inside square roots. You multiply those together. The three has nothing to multiply with. So it's just gonna be three square roots of 10. Three square roots of 10 for the hypotenuse of that 45, 45, 90, right triangle. <laughs> Thirty, sixty, ninety right triangles are pretty similar to 45, 45, 90 90s, but we're gonna use this pattern instead. So since 45, 45, 90s had two legs that were the same, 30, 60, 90, all the, all the angles are different, so we're gonna have all three legs being something different. But we still have a template. Um, to do this, the 30 degree is across from your shortest side. The short side, in this case, we're gonna call X, or whatever number we're gonna be working with um, in our different examples. The long leg is across from our 60 degree um, angle. And in this case, this is gonna be X times the square root of three. All right, and then of course your hypotenuse is always the longest side in any triangle, any right triangle. And in this case, it's gonna be two times X. So here we have an X in each of these. That X is gonna represent some number. And I can show you that here in number one. In number one, they give us the short side is 10. It's also oriented the same way as this one over here. So if this kind of represents my X, then up here from the hypotenuse, I would do two times that 10, which is 20. And over here for the long leg across from the 60 degree angle, that's gonna be X times the square root of three, or in our case, 10 times the square root of three. Let's look at another one where it's tipped kind of a different orientation. Here they give us the hypotenuse. We know that because it's across from the right angle. And to go from the hypotenuse, it's easiest to go back to the short side, all right? And that's always across from your shortest angle, in this case, the 30. So 60 divided by two is how I would do that, and that's gonna be eight. 
Once you have your short side, it's easy to go to the other one where you're going to take that number, 8, the short leg, times the square root of 3. Okay, the last example, um, I didn't make too hard here, but they do give us one with a square root. And again, since this is across from our long leg, or a uh, big angle, it is the long leg, we're going to say that the short leg is just going to be that number in front of the square root of 3. So in this case, 5. Once you know that short side, it's always easy to go to either, other, either of the other sides. In this case, 5 times 2 is going to be 10. So just like x was x times 2 in our template. So that's 30, 60, 90 right triangles. Let's check out some more. All right, next we're talking about trig ratios, and we're going to use this special word SOCATOA to help us out. This is a special word that math teachers made up to help you remember sine, cosine, and tangent, what the S, the C, and the T stand for. All right, the other uh, letters in here, the O, H, and A's, those stand for opposite, hypotenuse, and adjacent. So for example, let's uh, put some real numbers here along with this angle that we're going to be using. And let's say I said the adjacent side was 5 compared to this angle. The opposite side, the one across from it, was maybe 12. And let's say the hypotenuse is 13. Okay, the hypotenuse is always across from a right angle. If that's true, and I want to find the sine of theta, this Greek letter here, sine of theta, I could use Sokatoa here to help me out. So first off, sine, that's going to be the S. I need to write this as the O over the H. So the O, or the opposite, compared to my theta is 12, and the hypotenuse is going to be 13. So sine of theta is going to be 12 thirteenths. And you can just leave it like that. Sometimes those fractions simplify a little bit, and your teacher might want you to simplify. Uh, 12 thirteenths does not. All right, real quick, what about cosine of theta? Cosine of theta, well, that's going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, 5 over 13, because AH comes after the C. And then lastly, tangent of theta will be O over the A, 12 over, over A, 12 over 5. You can leave it just like that. Those are trig ratios. All right, for this next part, you're going to need a calculator that has the sine, cosine, and tangent button on them. All right. Um, and that is that we're going to find some missing sides of these right triangles given just a couple of sides and some sort of an angle besides the right angle. And I kind of wrote those in here in green. So let's look at this first one. I'll kind of show you what I mean. You also have to remember your trig ratios and your SOCATOA to help you out because we're going to use those here. And this first triangle, compared to the angle that they give me, in this case, 55 degrees, I have the side next to it, that's the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse. So if I remember my word, SOCATOA, let me write that up here for you. The one that uses the adjacent and the hypotenuse is cosine, right? Adjacent and hypotenuse. So I'm going to say cosine of my angle, 55 degrees, equals and then that same trig uh, ratio that we used before, the A over the H, so the adjacent X over the hypotenuse 20. All right, now to solve for X here, that's what you want to do, right? Finding the missing side, we have to multiply always by what's in the denominator. Okay, sometimes it's an X, sometimes it's a number. In this case, we have a 20. When I do that, it's going to cancel the 20s, leaving me with just X. And then over here, I have 20 times cosine of 55. That's where you're going to use your calculator. We don't know that off the top of our heads. We can't really figure it out. Um, so we're going to type in 20 times cosine of 55. Hit enter. In this case, it gives us 11.5. All right, rounding to the nearest tenth or so, 11.5. And then if I put that back in, just always want to double check if it makes sense. Our hypotenuse should always be the longest side. In this case, 20 is bigger than 11.5, so we probably did it the right way. Let's check out the second one. Here, compared to this 44 degrees, I have the opposite in the hypotenuse. That's going to be sine, right? Opposite in hypotenuse uses sine in our word SOCATOA. So again, I'm going to say sine of my angle, 44 degrees equals the opposite 7 over the hypotenuse x. Now, last time I said we're going to multiply by what's in our denominator. In this case, the, that is an x. So if I do that, if I multiply by x here and here, and it cancels, now my next line of work would be x times the sine of 44, 44 equals 7. 
I don't have the X isolated yet, so I have to do one more step. So when the X is on the bottom, it takes an additional step to figure it out. That's okay. Since it's being multiplied, I can just divide by sine of 44. All right, sine of 44 is just a number. That's okay to put the sign down here too. It looks like you're dividing by a word, which is kind of weird, but you can do that. All right, sine of 44. And then in the calculator, we're still letting it do all the work for us. We're gonna type in seven divided by sine of 44. Oops, seven divided by sine of 44. And when I hit enter, I get 10.07. Let's call that 10.1 if I round, 10.1. All right, and again, that's gonna go here. And if that's bigger than the other side that I know, since it's the hypotenuse, that answer makes sense. Okay, let's try the last one here. We're missing this bottom side. Compared to my angle, the 71, I have the uh, opposite and the adjacent. Opposite and adjacent, that is gonna be tangent. So let's say tangent of my angle, 71, equals the opposite 12 over the adjacent x. Another one where the x is on the bottom. Let me work this out one out nice and fast for you here. All right, so after working it all out, I think I get x equals 4.1. All right, moving right along. All right, just like with missing sides, with missing angles, we also need to use our calculator, um, one that can do sine, cosine, and tangent. All right, so here in this first problem, um, I've labeled some of these angles. I got an A, a B in the second one, and a C in the third one, just to make it easy. Um, but with this first one here, compared to this angle A that I don't know, I'm trying to figure it out, I have the opposite side and the adjacent side. Again, opposite and adjacent, and my word sokatoa is gonna be T for tangent. All right, so we're gonna say tangent of angle A, since I don't have a number there, I just have to put an A is going to equal that opposite over the adjacent seven over 15. Okay, now the variable that I'm solving for here is A. So to find A, I have to do what's called inverse uh, trig functions. And to do that, usually you have a second or a shift button on your calculator up here. And then above your sine, cosine, and tangent, you'll have what looks like this little, I'll do it for tangent, a little negative one above that word. All right, so uh, for me, I'm gonna hit the second, tangent, and then I am typing in seven over 15, the same uh, fraction that you see here, seven over 15. And when I do that in my calculator, oops, seven divided by 15, I get 25.01. So we'll say that A equals 25. Now, 25 what? Well, we're finding angles, so this is gonna be 25 degrees, like that. All right, let's try the second one. The second one, compared to my angle B, I have the opposite and the hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse is gonna be sine, right? Opposite hypotenuse. So we'll say sine of B, don't know that angle yet, equals the opposite 16 over the hypotenuse 21. Again, the order of that fraction matters about the word, O first and then H, so O or 16, the opposite on top, over the hypotenuse H, 21 on the bottom. When I type this in the calculator, I need to do again, B equals the inverse sine, of that same fraction, 16 over 21. So in the calculator, second sine, 16 over 21. Oops, 21, enter. And this gives me 49.6. All right, 49.6. And again, that's in degrees. And so that would be what B equals. Okay, the last one here, let's go a little bit quicker. Compared to the C, I have the adjacent and the hypotenuse, that's gonna be cosine. Cosine of C equals the adjacent 41 over the hypotenuse 44. So C is going to equal the inverse cosine of 41 over 44. If I put that in the calculator, inverse cosine of 41 over 44, that is 21.3 if we round. So C is 21.3 degrees. All right, and there you have how to find your missing angle. If you've ever been asked to solve a right triangle, what it means is that you need to account for all three sides and all three angles. All right, in the normal triangle, when they give this to you, this type of problem, they usually give you at least three things. So in the problem that I currently have here, I have that side B is 17, 
side A is 16, and angle C is 90, right? That's what that symbol means there. So I have to find the other three. I have to find angle A, angle B, and then side C. All right, so let's see if we can try that. Um, the first thing that you might want to do um, in this one is use the Pythagorean theorem to find C. Okay, so if I think A squared plus B squared equals C squared, well, the A and the B are given to me. This is going to be 16 squared plus 17 squared equals C squared. 16 squared is 256. Double check, 256. 17 squared is 289. And then that equals C squared. So if I take that and add those together, 256 uh, plus 289, that's 545 equals c squared, and so I take the square root of both to get what c is. So the square root of 545 is 23.3. 23.3. All right, and that is what c, side c is. I'll put it down here, 23.3. Okay, now we just have to find angle A and angle B. So since alphabetical order, I'll do A first. Now, I probably want to use the size that they originally gave me and not the one that I rounded to help me find angle A, which means I'm going to use the opposite and the adjacent and not the hypotenuse um, because this is a rounded answer. All right. So compared to this angle A, I have the opposite and the adjacent. That's going to be tangent. So I'll say tangent of A equals the opposite 16 over the adjacent 17. Now this is one like we had where we did the missing angles. You're just going to use the calculator to help you out and say that A equals the inverse tangent of that same fraction, 16 over 17. And when I do that here, the inverse, oops, inverse tangent of 16 over 17, it gives me 43.3, all right? 43.3 for A. 43.3, and that's in degrees. 40. 3.3 degrees. All right, and then there's a really easy way to find the last missing angle, and that's just to remember that all triangles have 180 degrees. So if I take 180 minus 90 minus 43.3, that's going to give me what's left for B. So I'm going to say B equals 180 minus 90 minus 43.3. Whatever that is should be my answer. 43.3. That's 46.7. All right, 46.7. And so I have successfully found all three angles, all three sides, and so this triangle is now solved for. All right, last topic in this video is a word problem. Let me read it to you. Here it says the Washington Monument is 555 feet tall. If you are standing 175 feet away from its base, uh, looking up at the top, What's the angle of elevation from your feet to the top of its tip, okay? And so let's just draw out a picture here. I got the Washington Monument. Um, don't make fun of me too bad for that in the comments. But anyway, from the tip up here down to where you are, somewhere like this, we can draw a right triangle. All right, so here's you. There you are. It says from your feet to its tip, if you're standing 175 feet away, and it is currently 555 feet tall. This is not drawn to scale by any means. It asks for what's the angle of elevation from the, your feet to its tip. Now that is gonna be this angle right here, okay? So compared to that angle that we're trying to find, we have the opposite and the adjacent side, right? This makes a right angle. And so because of that, we're gonna use tangent again, right? Opposite and adjacent, and my word sokatoa uses tangents. So I would say tangent, of the angle I want, so I'll call it theta since I don't know, equals the opposite over the adjacent, 555 over 175. If I solve for theta, I'm going to say theta is the inverse tangent, that's how we find angles, of that same fraction, 555 over 175, and in the calculator, second tangent, 555 over 175. Enter. That is 72.5 if I round. So theta equals 72.5, and that'd be in degrees. So to answer the question, what's the angle of elevation from your feet to the top? 
72.5 degrees. Hey guys, hopefully this video on triangles helped you out. If it did, you might find this video also helpful as it goes over some more triangle concepts. Till next time, we'll see you later.